The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Cowboys Storyline with Nick Eatman. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Cowboys Storyline. I am Nick Eatman here. Thursday, April the 11th. It's time to continue this off-season journey as we get closer to the draft and hopefully some some news. Not a lot happening here. Hasn't been a lot happening. Uh, A lot of speculation. That's always kind of the case, but not really anything specific. Um, Sure, that's going to change. That definitely will change by the end of the month. I bet it changes here at some point. We'll have a few things that that will be happening. Uh, just my my take. Um, but we'll talk about anything that you guys want to talk about here. We'll just go eight 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 five seven. Sorry, eight 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 five five two two nine seven. I've known that number for twenty years. I can't believe I messed that up. Text line eight one seven two nine zero three two nine eight. And that text line is important. If you are a member of the All Storyline team, hopefully you've Heard your name when we announced it um, a few weeks ago. Uh, we need your T-shirt size. We need your address to send it to you. So you can put that in at the text line. Again, this is first team, second team, third team, honorable mention. If you're on the storyline team, you have a T-shirt coming. We need to have that sent in the text line. Make sure and put your your name, your, your full name. Uh, I think we've got a few that don't have that uh, full name. So I can send you something in real uh, mail uh, and also the your uh, shirt size as well. All right, we've got we'll, our first two callers are two people that were on the team. Starting off with Anthony in Miami. What's up, my guy Nick the Quick? What's, What's up? up, baby? How are you doing? Hey, I'm all right, man. How are you? I'm good, man. All right, all right. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> the real high. <laughs> but anyway, no, yeah. I, What's I up? Sent that in. <laughs> What's on your mind, Anthony? Fifth- yeah. <laughs> Out, Nick. I said that in 15, 20 minutes ago. Um, I told Beam, I sent it in with the full stuff. I put the full stuff, name and sizes. So hopefully nice. you guys get that. Nice, okay, nice. I sent it to you. Okay, let's go with, since I want to join in on the, um, since we did wrestlers and football players, let's do the guy movie. My guy movie is Roadhouse. That's a guy movie, right? I would hope. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, the, All I right. made a remake of it here. Yeah, exactly, with um, Glenn, um, J- Gyllenhaal, or whatever his name is. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, my karaoke go-to song, although I'm a full R&B guy, my karaoke song is one of my favorite groups, Journey. Don't stop believing. You can't go wrong with that, baby. Nope. You can't no. go wrong with that. That's the Romo song, you know? Oh, yeah. It's, that's Romo's, I thought. I don't know if it's his favorite song, but, I mean, it's definitely, it's up there. Oh, uh, see that? Oh, yeah, that's 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 one of his, his songs. And I, I will say this about Romo. One time, he wasn't practicing at training camp. So when you're not practicing, he went to work out. He, if you're working out during practice, you can pretty much control whatever music's being played. And and he was in there jamming out to the Rocky Four soundtrack. So that's not a coincidence. Okay. That's, that's, yeah, that's definitely a Tony um, type of soundtrack for sure. All right, what, what's up? You got anything uh, else? What I got. This is what I got. I got a little game. It's quick. It's called I Do, I Don't, when it comes to the Cowboys in the draft. Okay, I'll start it off. Anybody want to participate, they can participate in that. Okay. I do, I don't. What I don't want the Cowboys to do is draft an injured player. No more injured players. I know they're looking at that guy out of Texas. If he can't start, if he can't be ready for mini camps, and what <laughs> You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. No more of that. We can't afford that. We we got to hit on everything just about. It's just the way it's set up right now. And what I do want the Cowboys to do, as I said before, is trade back. You can trade back a little, get a third, fourth. You can trade back a lot, 10 spots, 11 spots. Put another pick with it and get something big. You know what I'm saying? I, I'll do that. I'll do whatever it takes to get these picks. It's one, two, three, add another three, add another four. So we need it, and we need to hit on something, man, because we just don't got the money to do the things that everybody wants to do. So all that's right. all I got today, Nick. All right. Appreciate it. All right. That's good stuff. I like starting off with the game. I'm not sure why I didn't take a drink while he was talking, but that's okay. Um, you know, I, I'm always 
going to find the gray area here. What if the Cowboys, his I do want them to trade back. I don't want them to draft an injured player. That's what Anthony said. What if they do trade back to accumulate picks and they do draft some players that are injured? Um, as it stands right now, I mean, you're, you're not sitting with a lot of picks. I think you got five um, uh, draft picks right now. Um, six, maybe. Six draft picks. But and, and I understand the point of why don't don't take a guy that's that's injured, but the reason you do it is is to get value, and you, you're you're hoping you get a good football player who's going to come back from injury. He may not be good right now because he can't run very fast, but he's going to be good and he could be great, and that's the risk that you take. But I'm I'm with you in that. This is your free agency and your draft is all combined into one because you didn't do anything really in free agency or you couldn't do anything. So these guys have to be ready to play. Um, so I, I'm with you there. I could maybe make an exception later on in the in the rounds, but not so much in the second round. I, I, I'd like to see that one be a guy that can actually participate in the mini camp the next week. That's That would be my take. But, you know, they're going to always go for value. So I, I think that would be... One that they'll be looking at. But that's interesting. I do, I don't. I like it. All right, let's go to Michael, Bowling Green, Kentucky. All right, Nick. How you doing today? I'm good. What's up? Uh, all right, I was looking at some other areas, and I, I see Josh Allen got $30 million a year. So, you know, what's, what's Parkland's going to want? At least thirty five, right. maybe. Uh, yeah. C- CD's probably going to want thirty. Yep. At least. At least. That maybe like fifty five that's a hundred and twenty five minutes for three players. What I'm wondering is I know this is rumor and I've, I've, and I'm just wondering if you think it would be a, a smart idea if it was possible during the draft. I've seen where they talked about a possibility of the Raiders making a trade with the Cowboys, Dak for O'Connell and then a boatload of draft picks. I mean, would that be a doable or smart thing, or is it just? I mean, I you know I know you who are you've been tra- there like who are they trading? They were. I've seen rumors. They talked about the Raiders and the Cowboys making a trade during the draft. That goes to uh, the Raiders. O'Connell uh, comes to Dallas with a a bunch of draft picks. The Raiders are going to give up quite a few draft picks. Mm. Well. First thing has to happen, it, 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 you know, is Dak has a no trade clause, so he'd have to right. vo- void that. Um, you know, that that would that all the cap hit would be right now. I mean, all the all the hit would be this year. There wouldn't be any hit after that. There's about five or six options the Cowboys can do. That's one of them is to trade Dak if he if he, you know, if, if, they, he found, if they found a partner and if he if he agreed to it. Um, I don't see it happening. Therefore, I don't know about taking a lot of time doing that. I just don't. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think they're going to play this one out with him. But that's what I see. but yeah. But I mean, like that's that's an option. That's another option to kind of get away from this. And basically, next year is going to be tough. Okay, we all know this. I, we, we should we should know this that it's going to be a challenge because they're going to lose some players and they're going to have a lot of cap, a uh, dead uh, cap money. If you traded Dak, in a way, you're almost doing it this year. It would be this would be the year without a quarterback, uh, a proven quarterback, and then a lot of dead money on top of that. So, you still would, got Trey Lance, too. Yeah. I mean, this would be the year to do that. And maybe, you know, so yeah, y- 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 yes. And, and you don't have Trey Lance under contract next year. Right. So, there's there's advantages in doing that. Um, again, I I just think the Cowboys still feel like they've got a a good football team, and um, and with with McCarthy here and Zimmer here, and and these guys at the end of their their contracts that this is the year they're they're gonna they're gonna you know go for it. And I know you guys don't think so. The Super Bowl, Super Bowl. I'm not saying that. I mean, NFC Championship game. I'm, I mean, I'd be happy with the NFC Championship. Game. Sure. I don't even know what that is. I've never seen that before. Yeah. I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah I I mean, you, you, yes, but but I think 
I think this team with this roster can contend with that. You got to get in the tournament and you got to be playing well. You got to be playing well at that time of year and you got to, you, you know, you, you've got to be able to run the ball. You got to be a complete football team. And those things haven't always added up for the Cowboys. But are they good enough to get in there? Yeah, I still think so. And I think when that's the case, the Cowboys are going to continue to try to go for it. Uh, hey, I appreciate that. All right. Always, as always, Michael, thank you for the call. Uh, let's get a couple of text line questions here. This is um, Chris in New York, first time texter. Says, I'm not much of a talker. I'm a longtime listener. If the Cowboys don't take a running back in the first three rounds and decided <clears throat> to use those picks on O line defensive players, how confident are you with the committee of Rico Daddle, Deuce Vaughn, and Hunter Lipke, assuming they don't bring in a veteran? His favorite Cowboy is Jason Witten. Favorite guy movie is Reservoir Dogs. Nice. Rico! Yeah, that's a good one. That's good. Um, how confident? Well, not not super confident there with that with that group. Um, you know, I mean, I think I think I did I did the math on this. I think Rico has ninety six carries all you know in his career. The whole room right now is one hundred and sixty, and that's that's just a handful for Lipke, just a little bit for Deuce Vaughn. Malik Davis has a few. Uh, he, he'd be another guy you would throw in there. Snoop Connor has a, a few uh, with Jacksonville. So I mean, one sixty total. And, and 96 of it is with Rico Dowdle, who we all kind of think is inexperienced as well. So I'm not super confident with that. I, I'd like to have a little bit more uh, experience, not only as a, as a ball carrier, but also as a blocker um, and, and, and some vet, maybe some veteran eyes um, that, that's been around and played, played football. Um, because you're going to draft a guy, and he and he's definitely doesn't have any experience. So um, I, I, I think there's two running backs to be added to this team, at least. Probably three, probably three running backs, a veteran, a draft pick, and maybe an undrafted free agent. So, yeah, that's what I would imagine. I think we still got a few running backs on this team uh, to be added in. All right, let's go to Esteban in Austin, Texas on the line. Esteban. Hey, Nick, how you doing? Good, how are you? Uh, do you want me to be honest about that, or do you want me to just give it the Just easy hurry up, answer? buddy. Go for it. <laughs> uh, well, no, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm just looking at the, the upcoming draft, and I just wanted to uh, get your opinion. I, I, I know you've mentioned uh, drafting a quarterback in the first round probably wouldn't be Jerry Jones's plan. Right. But I think the more I think about it, you know, I, I think this is the right time to do it, and I, and I don't see uh, Dak improving any. Uh, he had an awesome year statistically, but I don't think he's going to be the guy to take, it, take us all the way. Uh, and I just want to get your opinion on that. And my man, um, my favorite man movie is uh, Die Hard. So, is it a Christmas movie? That's that's what everybody says. Uh, you can't really put it, it. And that's the great thing about it. It, it kind of fits all these different categories. But yeah, yeah. I uh, I've kind of I've kind of changed my tune. At first, I was like, no, it isn't. Um, but you know, I, I've I've kind of been talked into it. You know. Um, that you know, I asked the question: Could this movie have been made in July? And they said, Nah, not really, because he, because he, you know, he shows up there for a Christmas party, and that's why he's there, and you know, because it is Christmas, and so, all right, I'm, I'm with you there. Still, a pretty awesome movie, regardless. Um, all right. Uh, you like how I'm like kind of stalling around the uh, uh, from the Dak part, um, drafting a quarterback in the first round. See, it's not just that. It's also McCarthy. I mean, you're giving McCarthy one chance to go and, and, and improve on a 12-5 and five season and, and, and get further than you have in the playoffs. And so you're not going to give him any free agents, and now you're going to draft a quarterback for next year to not even help him, you know? We did that last year. You drafted a guy in the first round that didn't really help. You know, I mean, that's just the way the circumstance was. This year, that guy, Mozzie Smith, has to help. And the first round pick has to help as well. So, I mean, I, I mean, if you were going to do that, it, and and we'll see how it all falls to them. I mean, but I, I would hate I would hate for them to do that to, for McCarthy. I mean, because I mean, wh why bring the coach back if you're not going to really give him that opportunity to kind of go for it and prove himself even more? Because that's what has to happen. I, mean, I think we all know that. So um, that would be a weird circumstance for people not named Dak. 
you know, and then and then you throw that on onto it as well. Same thing. I mean, you want to you want Dak to to be the guy and improve and all that. Well, then you know, draft him, draft him, and some more offensive linemen that that can help and stay healthy and, and block for him, or or you know, or or even defensive help that can that can make plays and that also helps the quarterback. So I I, I think that the way this year is set up, I think you got to get the most plug and play player that's available at a position of need. And there are a few of them. So whoever is ready to come in and play right now, that's the guy to me that should be drafted. All right. Another uh, text line question. This is from, um, this is from Dan in Philly. He says of the players that the Cowboys didn't resign. The only one I'm disappointed is Hankins because he clogged the middle. Tyler Biotis, Tyron Smith will be missed. Everyone always said Tyler got pushed around and Tyron kept you hostage with his availability. Um, and then his past cowboy is Gary Hogaboom. Nice. Yep, I, that's the first I remember of a quarterback controversy when I was growing up. It was Danny White and Gary Hogaboom, and the whole locker room seemed to be split a little bit on, on those two guys. But um, Danny White ended up winning, um, and Hogaboom didn't last too long. And uh, Hogaboom is... I think the first former Cowboys player to be on Survivor uh, before Danny McRae did it. Um, but uh, he was on it as well. Jimmy Johnson was on it for like a couple of weeks too, but not, not too long. Uh, but, but I don't think they lasted as long as Danny did. But uh, anyways, that's all I really know of Gary Hogaboom. I agree on the Hankins part. That's the one guy I would kind of, you know, I'd, you don't have anybody really behind him right now that's proven. I mean, it's not Mozzie Smith. He's not really proven. And, and um, I mean, not that you have anyone really behind Biotish or Tyron Smith, but I think there's some options there. Um, but, yeah, Hankins, I mean, it was already a, a, a position that was a problem. And then when Hankins would miss games, they would struggle. They were better with him. I'm a little surprised they didn't try to to, to make a move there and, and keep him. Um Maybe that wasn't the best scheme fit for uh, for Zimmer, but I mean, I'd like to see if you could make it work. Uh, that and um, Adam Dirty, is the, old, the former defensive line coach, who's now in Seattle, uh, he definitely uh, wanted him a part of the team for sure. All right, let's go to Travis in San Antonio. Nick, what's going on? How are you doing? Doing good. So I was telling Chris, I got working at home on the computers, got the masters going, calling storyline. It's a good week. Nice. San, uh, I'll say this, the, the call to San Antonio sounds a lot better than the call to Austin. I oh, man, Esteban is, his line was a little staticky there, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's down, just down the highway a little bit. It's a little, it's smooth. What, what do you got Travis? All right. So to end, to end the kind of end of the week here, um, water burger over in and out. That's first. Yes. All day. Um, the habit, I agree with you. A double char with the lettuce wrap is the way to go. Um, the I, habit, when I lived out there, that was really good. I didn't say um, that. I just said you can develop some good and bad habits. But yeah, that maybe I was. Yeah, a, I, I, I hear was you. Yeah, bad, I knew. Yeah. I knew where you were going with it. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty strong. It's pretty strong. It is for sure. Um, since and then since they don't have a water burger out there. Yeah, we don't. We don't want it out there, anyways. Um, but I was going to say, uh, I was going to ask you a question. I don't think anyone's ever asked you at the end here, but then I also wanted to bring up, I think, um, the more and more I think about, it, I, I've heard, I heard the call, uh, about, I don't think they're going to like, like there's rumors about drafting a quarterback. I don't think they're going to draft a quarterback. I agree with you because you don't know if the new coach, if the new coach that comes in is going to like that quarterback. So I don't, especially if it's an offensive coach. So I don't really see that being a fit this year. I think it's going to be this preseason is going to be all Trey Lance. And right. I think that this preseason is going to be maybe the one that everyone needs to watch, like the most watched preseason in a long time, because I think they're delaying, pausing, whatever you want to call it on the contract, because I think they're going to see, do we have, are there signs that he's moving in the right direction to where we can go? Look, uh, to you know, to Dak's agent, I know I've talked about this before, but if he says we want 55, they go, ah. I mean, you know, we've talked to Trey Lance's representatives and we think we can maybe get a deal done for him in like the $20 million a year range. Mm-hmm. So it's like that might be a way that you can sort of have leverage, but it's all going to depend on um, how his preseason goes. And I know I've seen some videos he's working out hard and everything. So if he has 
a really good preseason, maybe that's sort of what they're waiting on to gauge. Like, do we want to go this direction or this direction? Because I think Mike is going to cost you, I think, close to $40 million, which is basically, if I remember, that's almost like what a quarterback right. two, three years ago cost. So you're going to be paying essentially two quarterbacks, which I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's, it's a luxury to have him, right? But it yeah. is a fact that you're going to be paying. He's going to be making more than some quarterbacks. Yeah, a lot of quarterbacks. So yeah, and then I still say I know everyone's tossed around the Mike, uh, the trade thing for for Dak is just a big rumor from what I heard. It's just not. A, it's a, it was someone threw it out there and people ran with it. I still say if you were going to trade somebody, and I, I love him, but if you were going to trade somebody, it would be CD because every draft is the same thing, and this year's no different. They, people are talking about not drafting a wide receiver in the first or second round because you can get so many guys in the third round. It's the deepest position. It's always the deepest. It's starting to turn into the running back, Nick, where it's like, yeah, why would I pay a wide receiver when I can just draft two, three more of these guys and they can produce? Well, so, that being said, if you think that way, then what about the, the other GMs out there that, that feel the same way? Do you think you're going to get the, the value that you're wanting um, for it, him. You're right. I, I agree. It may, it may. That's what I'm saying. It may start trending down where. Yeah. It, we, we'd have to. You'd have to see right to see what somebody would even be willing to offer for him. Yeah. But I do think we're starting to get to that point where, you know, you talk to a team and say, "Hey, do you want CD? Give us a one and a two. And they're gonna go. Mm, we can draft a guy in the third round that we yeah. think is gonna produce. So I think it's gonna start trending the other way. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to ask you because I know you grew up in Texarkana. And I've always been curious, you know, you because you said you're talking about the city's kind of like split right down the middle. So I was curious to ask you, and I don't think you've ever said, what, since you were right down the middle being pulled from both sides, was there a pull from both sides of your family? And what ultimately led you to go with Arkansas over Texas? Okay. I just wanted to hear what you, hear yeah. what you thought and have a great week. Thank you. Thanks, Travis. Good stuff there. Um, yeah, that, that's the whole trade stuff is interesting, though. It, it really is because I just – yeah, I don't know. I mean, you guys have been a fans for a long time. I've covered this team for a long time. I've been a fan for a long time. You know, you get a player like Micah Parsons. You get a player like C.D. Lamb. I'm not looking to trade them. I'm really not. Uh, unless unless they're just doing things that just really are maybe hurting the locker room, hurting the team. And I don't think that's not the case. I mean, it's just it's just not. I Yeah, there might be some people that kind of, you know, view Micah a little differently. But he is different. I mean, he's a different player. He's a unique. He's a unique person. He's definitely a unique player. And he's a difference maker. And the same goes with with CD. Dak's at a different point in his career a little bit. I don't think you could trade him like that. But I'm just saying, I'm not I'm not real big on trading those guys like that. I, I, I think you figure it out. Because you need a handful of players that can go win football games. And yeah, you can trade them for picks. But we've seen, we saw last year's draft. We've seen other drafts at times where... It just didn't work out. It's not always a sure thing. You know, Mo Claiborne was not a sure thing. Uh, they drafted him sixth overall, even some first-round picks. Now, they've drafted well. I'm going to say this. This, this, team, this team has drafted well. But even at that, making a Pro Bowl doesn't mean you have a difference maker. I mean, you, I mean, Micah Parson is on track to be one of the— one of the best pass rushers the, the team has ever had, and the same with C.D. Lamb. So I'm not really I'm not interested in trading them for just for draft capital and, and hope that you keep swinging and, and and hitting home runs because right now you're looking at grand slams. So I don't know about that. Um, let me clarify the other your question about living in Texarkana. I don't I never actually lived in Texarkana. My, I, I said when my parents grew up there, that's where they lived. Arkansas side, my front mom, dad on the Texas side. I now I had grandparents that lived there, and and um, and now and my parents still live there. But but so I, I had a lot of ties. I've been there a lot of times, and I, and I, I know the, the town well. But but I've never actually lived there. There really wasn't much of a. There was never a tie. There was never any kind of split uh, decision to make here. It was Arkansas all the way. My family is from Arkansas. It was it. I'm an Arkansas Razorback fan all the way. Our basketball team with zero players on the roster. I'm excited about them right now. Arkansas has always been the team. Um, it, there's, there's, there's never been. You know, I've never done anything like this with any kind of horns. I've never done that before, uh, up or down. I, I don't do that. 
um, at all. But um, a ton of respect for that university. And I know this, when they're playing my team, it's always a big game because I have a ton of respect for them. But there's never been a decision to make. My family is in Arkansas. Even when I lived in Oklahoma, Arkansas was the team for me, always. All right, Rob in Vegas, next. Hey, Nick. What's up, Rob? Uh, the guy that called from Miami, I, was his name Anthony? Yeah. I, I totally agree. This ain't. This is definitely not the year to be taking a guy who's not a hundred percent. Yeah, I'm sure, and I'm, I'm sure Mike McCarthy feels that way. Yeah. totally. And you'll, and you'll see in this draft how they feel about Mike McCarthy on who they pick in the first round, or who, who they pick in, in any of these rounds. Honestly, fair. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're talking about you know the weather's nice in Vegas, about eighty-five. So I'm feeling good. How about we do a draft just for the – you can only draft from the 90s Cowboys teams because I think the 90s is still close to the teams that play today, not the 70s. Yeah. So, but since you're the head coach, you're going to pick first. But whoever you pick to make this current team better, uh, we know what this team needs. We know what positions where we get. So whoever you pick, he's off the board now. And then the next person who called, whatever. So, so like who it. would you pick off the '90s teams? Who would be your first pick to make this the 2024 Dallas Cowboys better? I mean, you don't have a running back, so I'm I'm just saying. No, are you talking about yeah. from the '90s drafts, or you're saying just, no, 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 the no. whole team of the '90s? I mean, this you feels know? this feels like goes against I love the game I think this is great and don't forget if I'm the head coach I mean who's the captain me right okay <laughs> so there you go um, I'll pick I'll pick second you, okay you pick first. I'm, I'm sorry this team doesn't have an experienced running back and the greatest running back with the most productive running back in the history of the NFL is sitting there I mean I'm is it any other question than Emmett Smith wouldn't that no I yeah that, I, was, Emmitt, I, I kind of made a list Sure, okay. Emmett Smith. All right, then Emmett Smith would be my pick. You don't have a running back, and he was pretty good. Emmett Smith's my guy. With the second okay. pick, go for it. I'll take Dion. I think if you put Dion with um, Diggs and then you move Bland, I, I, I just think a Dion is so dynamic. He could do punts. He could, I mean, I, I would take Dion. It was he, it, there was a couple choices. But I'm, since you took Emmett, and I, I totally agree with Emmett, I'm going to go with Dion to, to show up the defense. It's tough to pay, play defense with the rules, so you're going to need the best athlete out there that can make plays, and there you go. All right. I like that game. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a good game. I have a feeling who's going to go third. Um, yeah, I, me too. That's okay. <laughs> Is he strong? Yeah. Right. Well, I was leaning towards that too. So yeah, it let's, was like you know. But let's I wait. Think defense, defense, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say. Yeah, anything. I just don't we'll wait. have somebody pick third. The game is this is this is proposed by the captain of the All Storyline <laughs> team. Uh, Rob has said uh, if you could pick somebody from the '90s, a player from the '90s to fill in and help with this current team, who would be your first pick? I went on this this limb and said Emmett Smith. And then you yeah. went with Deion Sanders. All right. So if you're following along and you can hear that, um, good stuff. Um, that's what you have to do on a show on April 11th when, you're, when your football team doesn't make any moves this offseason, coming off a terrible playoff loss, waiting on the draft. You don't even have a high pick. That's what you do. That's how you become the captain. That's how, that's how you become the captain. That's right. So, Chris, since you're – chiming in and i hear the phone ringing back there too so i know you got to get it but you want to pick third i mean i would just i mean you have got a guy on the first team next so if you wanted to have him do it oh yeah 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 okay but you can you can pick fourth but you, sometimes those guys don't always hear so we'll, we'll throw it out there who is next i don't even see that on there. oh i'm sorry i didn't Who's put up? him up travis in san antonio i'm sorry well he went we just had him he was fourth oh, it's sebastian sebastian it's savannah right. there we go What's How up? How are we doing? How are we doing? How are we doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Sebastian, Savannah, Georgia, my man. What, so man. what am I picking exactly? I could, you know you can't hear when you're on hold. Right, right, right. So um, the the captain <clears throat> of the All Storyline team, uh, Rob, suggested they play a game that you pick 
a player from the 90s to help this team, any player from the 90s era to help this team, this current team, who would you pick? He's, he let me pick first. And, I mean, since there is no running back, uh, I went with Emmett Smith, and then he went with Deion Sanders to help pair up with uh, Bland and um, Diggs at corner. So uh, I go, I go with Nate. Nate, Nate Newton, Newton, hands down. You need that that not just the, the big fella in there, but that heart and soul in the locker room. And you know, Nate grew into type a type of leader who kind of led by example, doing his own thing and that's... stuff. But that fun guy is always awesome to have around the locker room. And I feel like with Zeke gone, we're missing that. I love it. I love yeah. that. What'd you say, Chris? I said I'll pick next, and it's Larry oh. Allen. He could put it. He played tackle. Yeah, yeah, he did in the nineties. He certainly he did. He did. He played tackle. So, um, so we've got we've got a running back that's running behind Nate and Larry. So this is helping th- this team. Now the problem is, is if we go to, to like fifteen picks, then then we don't have a team anymore. Then we're just gonna have the nineties <laughs> Cowboys. But uh, but uh, so you can only really do this like five times. Maybe what would be kind of interesting is you have to bounce around to different eras. But but just from the nineties. Where the game hasn't changed too much. Anyways, Sebastian, sorry, go ahead. You called for another uh, reason. You guys are perfectly fine. You're actually kind of leading into my point. You know, at some point in time, the legends have to move on so that the new legends can be appreciated, such as Tom Brady moving on helped us really appreciate what uh, Mahomes is doing right now. Carter and uh, Jerry Rice had to move on for you to appreciate people like T.O. and Randy Moss and <laughs> things of that nature. So <laughs> Hold on. for like – Go ahead, keep keep going. I got I got another. You know, I'm always gonna be kind of like, oh, hold up, but keep going, yeah. keep going. But uh, I was just saying, you know, just in general, like legends have to move forward. Like Jason Witten had to move on for us to have a guy finally come on, like a Jake Ferguson. I'm not saying that he's a legend right now, but he's doing pretty well. At some point in time, it's very funny, like fandom, because they're like, oh, two years ago, get rid of Tyron Smith. He's always injured. Last year, he makes a Pro Bowl, and it's like, God, we got to have Tyron Smith. You know, people were sick and tired of Tony Romo throwing late-game interceptions. We get this young guy in there. Then you get to the playoffs, and you're like, well, put Romo back in the game because he's got the experience. And, and that's just the way that this goes. You know, but it was time to move on from Tyron Smith, so I'm okay with the team doing that. It was time to, like, eventually let go. And my biggest thing is, like, last year you heard me very excited, and I'm like, yo, just what if we make the NFC Championship game? I'm not going to do that this year because I do think that we're in for a tough year, but I think that this can be a a career-defining year for Dak Prescott if he can lock in and play well with the pieces that are left around him. And I say left because there's not much left. But there's more on offense than we have on defense. We really need to tackle defense some more in this uh, off season, as far as the draft goes, because obviously free agency is coming on. Like I said before, I like the signing of Kendricks, but I did think like for Micah Parsons, everybody's going to Micah Parsons. He's, he's truly entered that era where it's like you live long enough to die a hero or see yourself become the villain. And he became the villain. Because if you look back to just a year ago, everybody was team Parsons and he's the greatest and he wants to win and nobody else wants to win. And then Parsons took that and ran with it. And now they hate Parsons. Because he talks way too much. Yeah. And I'm cool with like whatever is going on right now, but I just wanted to hear your opinion on like letting Dak play out this final year. I think might actually turn out to be the best possible play than giving him the big money. Because if you if he can't do it with what he has around him, and he couldn't do it before with what he had then, you got to go younger and cheaper at QB. You have to. Okay. If we're going to do anything going forward, I do believe that we're going to eventually. I, even if he was to do well this year. We are going to have to make some tough decisions to go younger and cheaper at QB. It just costs too much. All right, Sebastian, before I let you go, I want to make sure I heard this correctly. You're saying you think there's more more around Dak on offense on than, than on defense? Left. Left, I should say. What he has left. Because right now what you got coming back on defense is injured. You've got Trayvon coming back injured. You're missing your defensive tackle. You're missing a lot of pieces on defense right now. So what you have left on offense, C.D. Lamb, you know, your running backs, you'll draft a running back. He still has the O-line in front of him, even with a couple pieces that left out of the door. He's got more to work with on his offense than we do currently on the defensive side because we have no idea what Zimmer's going to do with this defense. Well, yeah. I know. All right. Appreciate the call. Um, that's, that's one way to look at it. I mean, I would probably look at it differently than that, thinking from Dak's perspective. He's in the shotgun. He's got a running back here. So – he has no idea who's taking the snap from and he fakes it here. He doesn't know who he's faking it to. And he goes back to pass and he doesn't know who's block, who's blocking his blind side back here. So when I think of like 
from the quarterback's perspective of like holes, uh, the center, the left tackle, and the running back seem to be pretty important. Now, I get what you're saying, Diggs. You know, he's coming back from injury and overshown. We we don't know yet. And but um, and defensive tackle too. I still think though we have key positions that we don't even know anything about yet that we have to look at at offense. So um, maybe the answer is both, and that's not fun. You know, there's holes on both sides of of the. But I mean, I still think it's a talented roster for sure. But um, some question marks, uh, to say the least. And uh, I just thought it was funny. When you said sometimes the greatness, you gotta, you got, you know, guys have to move on so you can really see, you know, they're, they're you know, appreciate them a little bit. And uh, uh, I don't know. I, uh, the first thing I could think of is, you know, Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. You know, they when they they moved on, and and I still don't think that LeBron gets appreciated like like I think he should. Maybe he has to move on, and people will appreciate him. I don't know. Maybe maybe so. Uh, I don't know if he ever will. I don't know if he'll ever stop playing. Uh, he's pretty. He's pretty freaking awesome. All right, Irwin in Denver. Irwin in Denver. They got a pretty awesome basketball player over there in Denver. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah they do. You think, you think he's MVP? Joking? Uh, I don't know. I, I, he's he's pretty good. You know, I hate he's, to, you know, he's really good. He's really good. And of course, there's a lot of talk about Luca maybe getting some MVP love, but I just uh, not not over not over the Joker who does everything. Sorry, yeah, that's not what. It's not why you called. I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. So just a couple quick things for you, Nick. I don't know where your pick is at as far as that 90s draft goes, but uh, I was just wanted to get your thoughts we on took it. Four. We have four. If you if you want to have the fifth pick, you can. Okay, I'll, I'll take the fifth pick. Who was, Emmett who went, was picked? Emmett went first. Dion went second. Nate Newton third. Larry Allen fourth. Any, any right. 90s player can help this team. I'm absolutely going to go with Ken Norton Jr. You know, I was, I was absolutely thinking him. That was the guy I was thinking too. Love it. Yeah, he was just a really, really solid linebacker. Well, not only that, I mean, he was solid. He was probably better than solid. He was, he was really good, but he kind of played the position like. I don't know, like his dad was a heavyweight boxer or something like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, just played nasty, and he he had a fighter's mentality, just like his dad. Yeah. His dad actually was a, a boxer. If you think I was just joking, but he played that way, you know, and and he brought an he brought an attitude to that defense as well. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, I love that pick, Ken Norton Jr. All right, all right, Irvin, what else you got? Yeah, I just wanted to get your thoughts on something real quick. If things don't quite go the way all the Cowboys fans would like them to go, um, as far as uh, McCarthy and everything, what 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 do you think the chances are of Al Harris Jr. actually being able to take that next step and uh, get to that head coaching spot? Al Harris. To get your... Yep. Uh, I think for him, I mean, I I, I think he would. He's going to have to elevate into the I would think I, I'm sure there's other examples out here but I would think defensive coordinator needs to be the next step for him um, which could happen you know I mean I you know, he's he, he got you know a, a title change a little bit but uh, not not so much to, to DC I, I would think that would be the next move for him uh, have a, have another successful year. Maybe another guy leads the league in interceptions, like it's happened twice in the last three years. So right. he, he's 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 got skins on the wall for not only as a player. He was a really great player, but he also has these guys have had some success. Um, he would probably just again. I'm, I'm not saying that he has to go this route. Um, but I would think usually from a defensive backs coach, it moves up, need to be a coordinator, need to have some success there. But, um, you know, if it happens sooner than that, that, that would be great. I'm sure there are examples of that. I feel like there are, um, examples of guys that have maybe gone as a secondary coach and maybe got, you know, tight ends coach. I've seen it happen, but, but usually the path is a DC first. Yeah. So, Hey Nick, you and uh, Chris have a great day. Thank you right. for taking my call. Thank you. Yes. All right, Irwin in Denver. I get excited. Right? Randy in Texarkana. This is my guy right here, man. Randy. 
What is happening? It's Thursday, April 11th, 2024, Season 2, Episode hey, 9. You just, yeah, you want to just start the show. <laughs> episode 9, let's go. Let's go, Randy. <laughs> That's nothing, what I'm talking about. Hey, nothing going football on. player. Extra can- yeah, what's up? There you go. Favorite football player. Also, Mr. Darren Woodson. Not only is he a Hall of Fame player, but he's got a Hall of Fame smile, if I do say so myself. You can say it yourself. I'm not that dude's it. got a smile on him. Hey, two new uh, karaoke's. I got Behind Blue Eyes by Limp Biscuit, that version of it. And Don't You Forget About Me, right. Simple Mind. Breakfast Club. You there know, you go. You've thrown out four songs. Oh, and dude, I got a bunch. I bet you do, <laughs> but I'm just saying... Not to stereotype, but I, I would think a country song would maybe fit a little bit of the accent, and the area you're from. Nothing. I was mm, ah, George Strait. You look so good in love, George Strait. I'll rock that one out. No, I'm more of a Harris Band uh, '90s kid. You know, I was I was into all that good stuff. All right, cool. Yes, sir. Well, well, uh, uh, have you been listening to our draft here of the of the '90s? Uh, no, I haven't. Well, I don't know. What, what are you referring to on the music or on no, the no, no. So we so, so we said it was Rob in Vegas that said, "Let's pick a, a player from the '90s that uh, would that would fill in for this team that could help this team, current team." Oh, he oh, let, he yeah. Let me pick first. I picked yeah. him. Then Dion got picked. Nate Newton, Larry Allen, and Ken Norton got picked. That's fine. We we can't go too much longer because I mean the, the team is about to be a, the '90s Cowboys, and then they'll never lose a game. But um, you have another Step guy. Nosky. You have Step. Step. Love it. Love it. Solid. That's a good one. That's a really good one. That's the sixth pick, and the seventh pick. I'm just gonna go ahead and pick again because I'll be damned if we're gonna go seven picks and they don't have Darren Woodson included. So Darren Woodson. Ah, is gonna I be figured my, that was a, yeah, yeah, I figured that was a given. Okay. Yeah. I, I should have done that. Yeah, he's on the team. He's on the team. If anything Absolutely. I mean not even as a player, like you said, as a as a smiler. He'll just be yeah. a smiler. Yeah. Man, he's got some chompers on him, I'm uh, telling you. Them uh, things are nice. But he's got a little money in him. Maybe. Uh, maybe so. All right. So if I don't run long, I, I would like to ask you to clear up something after I go through my football part of it here. But here's my football part, and I'm gonna I'm gonna um, channel my inner Jesse Holly with some metaphor because he loves doing that. <laughs> All right, now this is just me. This is Randy. If if Mr. Will has a blowout on his way to the star on draft day, and they say, "Hey, Randy, come make our draft," this is me. This is what I think they should do. All right, here's the metaphor part of it. When you were a kid, your mama gave you that plain bowl of just regular Cheerios. You wanted some sugar on it. Mama would just sprinkle a little bit of sugar on it because that's how she was. You'd eat that cereal. It was still pretty plain. The second you got your chance to make it for yourself, what'd you do? You'd dump the sugar all over it. So thick that when you were done, you had sugar on the bottom. You could scrape it with your spoon. That's how I'm going to do my draft. I am not going to sprinkle a corner here, a receiver here, a safety here. Don't. I say pour all the sugar, offensive line, defensive line, make your entire draft that. Because if you ask anybody, hey, what's what's been our problem? Stop and run. You hear it on every call. Overload the offensive line, defensive line with draft picks. Because, I mean, I think in all the specialty places, we're we're okay as far as starters. Overload the offense line, defensive line, possibly second pick of the draft, a running back, and that's as far as I'll let that go just because if the best one falls to you. But take all them guys to camp and truly rebuild it. Hey, the best set wins the job. I don't care what your contract is. I don't care how much you get paid. We've got to thicken this thing up and just put everybody on that. And then they can use the undrafted part of the draft to pick up a bunch of extra wide receivers and all that good stuff. Hmm. So what do you think about that? Well, I'm pretty sure I know what your next uh, karaoke song is going to be. Poor sugar on me, but I, yeah, that was, that was too easy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I was figuring that that, that was going to factor into this. All right. No, no, it wasn't, but uh, yeah, it was pretty easy to throw that in there. All right. All right. Hey, and uh, now it was it Anthony in Miami that called first. Yeah. Okay, I got four rules I need him to hear. If he wants to come up and holler at me. First rule, you don't make fun of anybody up there singing. 
Second rule, you don't judge anybody up there singing. We're up there to have fun. Third rule and fourth rule, it's crazy that he said it. But if you decide you're going to sing Journey or you decide you're going to sing a Whitney Houston, buddy, you better be able to bring it. You can't mess those two up because those two right there have one-of-a-kind voices. You better you better know what you're doing when you step to the mic with those. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, uh, do I – yeah. Am I running? Am I running long, or do yeah. you have? No, I think you're. Yeah, I mean you're. You can. You can go. We're gonna long. make a road trip this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm down, brother. I'm down. You're gonna enjoy I, yourself. I'm, I I got an extra bedroom. I got a couch. Yeah. I'm gonna go to see my mom. You know, but yeah, we're really we're gonna we're gonna bail out and go hang out with Randy. Hey, um, yeah, I'll line the shots up. Ready and, to go. And don't worry. I mean, uh, that rule's not for me. Now, Chris, I think. We'll probably sing I Will Always Love You by... Nope, nope, by, uh, I got a song. Whitney. What's your song? What's your character What's yours? Song? Mine is funny. Uh, the uh, Ray Stevens, you know who that is? Uh, like a, what's the song? Is that like a Ray comedian? Missi- well, he did The Streak, right? But Mississippi Squirrel Revival. That's my song. Okay. Oh, yeah. Go try Thanks. that one out. It's good, it's good. Does, Ooh, is okay. That, is I that can't the hit book? the high notes. You know, no. like you go to the book and all that. Is it's that ever, in there. Is it in there? It's funny. It's a funny song. So I remember him as a comedian guy, right? All right. Right. He does the streak. You know, you call him streak. Fast right. man on two feet. Right. Right. Okay. No. Uh huh. Sorry. Okay. Got you. Yeah. There's stuff you, I never really know. All right. This show's hitting the rails, but that's okay. That's okay. Ah, uh, hey, it's off all right. season, dude. You got to I mean, I'm trying to help you out because every call is, hey, what do you want to do for the first pick? Hey, what do you want? I mean, <laughs> after a while, you've kind of answered all these questions, you know. So let's let's just change it up a little bit. All right. So all right. here here's what I want to know on the <laughs> man. I need you to clear up something for me. I don't know if I missed the episode or if maybe y'all just never explained it and it was between the two of you. But a handful of years back, when you and Dave. Uh, we're on the show together. Y'all always had like this little inside joke y'all would do when y'all were making fun of somebody or something, and you'd say something like the Bank of America or, <laughs> or something. It, I, I, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. Is yeah, that do. something you can explain now or maybe not? No, maybe not. No. Okay, no. that's fine. That's no, cool. It's Just, not, you know, leave it's us a, all out. It's, uh, yeah, it's, um, <laughs> No, it's not. It's no, not that, that's cool. Because <laughs> that's a sponsor, and they are a great bank. So okay, yeah, okay, it's a, okay. I'll it's leave kinda, it alone there. But yeah. I, so okay, so I wasn't just imagining. Well, it it, yeah, it was sh- there, right? We shouldn't have. Yeah, it was. It was there. Very. You did a okay. very astute about it. Um, okay. We should have called it like uh, the boa, ex- you know, boa constrictor type. You know, because it's right. not about Bank of America. Anything to do with Bank of America. It's really the initials. B O A. That's okay. what it is. Okay. So, so that's what it is. And if a player wasn't playing so well or do, or the game was considered this, it was a B O A. All right. Okay. I'm just going gotcha. to leave it at that. So it has nothing oh. to do with the bank. But okay. <laughs> bank of America was just the, you know, yeah. Man, I used to always be like, now what the hell are they talking about? It, it so, would just, it yeah. would kill me, but I'm glad so, you cleared that up. So it, I didn't miss anything. You didn't miss anything. We were calling, yeah, it was a, it was a okay. B O A. And you know you can kind of you can take it from there. There you go. All right, gotcha. Chris, Chris All can right. tell him if Chris can put you on the line. Chris can tell you if you if he keeps you on the line. So. Uh, <laughs> All well, right. you know, hey, I'll call back. Hey, I'm gonna make that team, dude. That's what I'm trying for. Uh, if, I've got to call. I've got to time my lunch up. See, I get to take my lunch when I want to, but it has to be within a certain hour of the day. So I try to time my lunch up to calling in. So I rarely get to hear you live. So. Right. I, if I talk about something that y'all have already talked about, dude, cut me off. Say, hey, man, we already covered that. Trust me, I'll come up with something else real quick. I, I think you will, okay? The whole, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have hated to disappoint you and say, oh, Randy, you're the second one that talked about sprinkling sugar all over the draft like a cereal. <laughs> yeah. No. Hey, did, did you did you like that, though? I, I hate cereal, actually. It does? So, so oh, not, well, so but it makes sense. You it makes sprinkle sense. a bunch of players on the Cowboys, it's going to be just plain Cowboys again. All right. I, all make right. it happen. Pour it all in one spot. Change something this year. Got all it. right. Like like Jesse Holly, Jesse Holly likes to say, I'm out. All right. <laughs> all right. This show is made up of characters. There's no doubt about it, Randy. You're you're uh, you're one of a kind for sure. Um, again, I didn't know there were people like that in Texarkana. Um, 
but um, yeah, looking looking strong uh, for early spot there on the team. Jonathan in Fullerton, California, has been waiting a long time, man. I'm sorry, Jonathan. What's up? Oh no worries, Nick. Uh, how you doing? I I keep trying to not say how you doing ever since you brought up not no. saying how you're doing. No, it's real hard. No, it's 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 the way it is. That's what we're taught in life. That's how that's what that's how we we talk. It's fine. No, it's <laughs> totally fine. Yeah. I mean, this last I'm gonna call, work on it on the next call. How about this last um, call? We we found out how Randy is doing for sure. So it's all good. What's on your mind? Oh, man, Jonathan? I'm going to have to recatch it. I wanted to ask, what's the most popular way that people tune in live to your show? Because I tried setting it up on Twitter to, like, give me a notification when you do a live video, and that's not really – it doesn't always work. So mm. do people, like, put it on the calendar or something? I don't know. Like, the schedule sometimes changes a bit. I know I think it's kind of set now with the off season, but sometimes it changes. I don't know, so – I was curious yeah. what's like the best way to know when you guys are like live and ready to go. Yeah, that's a that's a great question, and and I I thought the Cowboys the official Cowboys count account would would uh would be your best way, you know, because they usually tweet it out. But probably going, I mean, you can always go to the website or you know even on the app as well. Um, going on to the app and just to, just to check out the schedule. The schedule is pretty up to date of what what the what the shows are going to be for that day, um, on on like the podcast schedule from the app. Oh, okay. um, but uh, Chris might have a better answer to that, honestly, as as far as just getting alerts and notifications. Um, I, I I thought Twitter would be the way, but um, to, uh, when the when they start, yeah, Twitter just, is probably the best way. Have uh, turn each each. Um, each show has their own Twitter account, so just go to their Twitter account, hit notifications, and as soon as it goes live, you'll get it. Usually, it's five minutes ahead of time. So there you go. Oh, okay, well, cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I wanted to be them. sure. Like I usually do, uh, like on Apple Podcasts, I'll listen after. But obviously, the live show, I want to know when it's live to know when to call in. But um, just uh, a couple is, of is other this, things I wanted to ask. Is this your first call? Um, no, second call. Oh. I'm uh, the cursed Californian that went 0 and 9 for all the oh yeah, yeah. games I've gone through. Yeah, yeah, you never get to go to another game. Yeah, I got it. Yep. <laughs> well, this year or the upcoming season, I want to go to Cleveland. So I don't know how that'll go, but I got family there I want to visit and I want to check out the stadium. Go for so it. That'll be fun. But um, just a couple things like. I know, like, uh, Mike, Mike has been a, a lot of talk on Twitter. Everyone, A lot of people saying, oh, let's cut him. Or, no, like, oh, let's keep him. He's a generational player. Do you think if he won, like, uh, defensive player of the year, all these talks wouldn't have been as gone as much? Like, I know he's good, but if he was, like, definitively, like, defensive player of the year, um, the people wouldn't be talking because, like, I was listening to Hanging with the Boys earlier, and Jesse Holly was like uh, making comparisons with Dez, like, oh, like he was unstoppable. Sometimes he was a diva, but like we put up with it because, like, he put up the numbers. He was so fun to watch. And then other question, so I can let you go, is, um, what do you think the incentives are on both sides for not wanting to? do uh, like make these contracts with Dak and CD and then eventually Micah happen. Like I kind of get on the Cowboy side because, and we're hearing more from the media from Cowboy side, like reasons why they don't want to sign them. We never hear from the agents like, um, I don't, like Dak, I could kind of sort of understand, but if a lot of things are being held up by these contracts, like signing players and stuff, like why aren't we getting them done? Like, I don't have. An I, I don't know. I do not have an answer for that, and I wish I did. I do not know why. I think there's some people in the organization that don't actually understand that either. Um, I, I, I don't know why, and uh, I, I think it would it would benefit them to get some of these done earlier. Um, but I, I can't I can't give you that one because I I, I don't know. I would have liked to for them to get CD done earlier. And I bet they would have also, because the price tag wasn't was not going to be in the 30s if they did it last year. So right. you know, it's not going to go down. I mean, I, I don't I don't know. I can't I can't tell you the answer for that. And I I think that I agree with you. I think they should be getting these done earlier. And uh, but 
they you're right. The, the Cowboys aren't coming out and then just having a bunch of uh, press conferences of, of why that they're they're waiting. They don't feel like that there is a deadline, but I think that you know they could they could have probably done more things if they wanted to in free agency had they knocked some of these these uh, contracts and gotten these contracts done. But um, I, I I don't have the answer for that. So. Do you think, uh, like, I anticipate, like, there's two big factors for me personally. I think that, like, once the draft happens and we know the players we have, like, from the draft, there could be a lot of movement, either contracts, free agent signings. But also, do you think that, like, I mean, obviously we wouldn't want CD or Dak to perform poorly next season. That's not what we shoot for. But if they do, do you think the team could see that as, like, negotiation for contracts like I mean like I said obviously we don't want to do bad but we have to deal with the situation that we have and like if we don't do a 12 and 5 season this upcoming season due to whether it be players or whatever like that could take a I feel like the players could take a big like hit on their negotiation you know fighting power if they don't perform, whether it's the individual's fault or the overall team's fault, like, do you think the, like, they could use that to their advantage, like, trying to negotiate contracts? Uh, I, from a quarterback standpoint, maybe, but not really any other. Um, and, and thanks for the call, Jonathan. You got a lot of stuff in there. Uh, appreciate that. I, I, you know, a quarterback is, is his, the success of the team is tied to them a little bit more. Um, than it would be. I, I can't see, you know, I, mean, I can't see somebody like CD or, or Micah having a great year from a stat standpoint and, and the team not doing well and then affecting that. Um, maybe so much for, for quarterback. And then you said something earlier about Micah uh, being, if he was like defensive player of the year, do you think he'd still get viewed the same way? Um, you got to remember that, you know, if he, people vote on him being defensive player of the year, so he'd have to be hands down better than some of these other guys just to just to get the vote i mean i'm sure he annoys people that that aren't that don't cover the team or you know from afar and they they see stuff or hear stuff and maybe they roll their eyes whatever i mean i don't know i think it's affected some of the voting i, I mean he didn't get first team all pro and and i think he should have but um, so I, I think it's already sort of affecting that. So if he's going to get in defensive player of the year, that means he's getting the votes. It means he's making enough plays at the right time to do all of that. So, yeah, I think I think that will that will definitely, you know, change people's opinion of him if he were to play better. And, and, and especially in, in key moments of key games and things like that. But yeah, I really don't have a problem with him as a player at all. Um, and so I, I think he'll be he'll be fine. But I mean, he's going to have to to you know he's going to be way better uh, just to, just to kind of sway some of those votes. I, I think to, to go his way. All right, let's get one more caller in before we end this show. Jeff in North Carolina. Jeff, what's up, buddy? What's going on, Nick? How you doing, buddy? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. Uh, I got a I got a, a player from the nineties to put on our team. Uh, our offensive line is pretty much set, right? Um, you got, I mean, got, we're, yeah, well, we're, we're pretty good. With, with, I thought about Eric Williams because Eric was great, but but if we're going with who was a player we need, I'd say Russell Maryland would be a good one to plug in to the middle of the line there. Yeah, and that would help our defensive line. So help our stopping the run. So I was going to touch real quick on uh, Michael. I think it was the second caller. He's talked about the the rumor. Well, not really the rumors of the trade, but. I, I think what he's talking about, there was a story on, it's a, it's a website called Cowboys Wire, and it was wrote, yeah. uh, written by Katie Drummond. He's a blogger. And his and his take on it was the Cowboys would make two pre-draft trades, and the first one would be Dak Prescott to the Raiders in exchange for Aiden O'Connell, uh, their 13th pick in the first round, the 44th pick in the second round, 112th pick in the fourth, a 2025 first, a 2025 third, Ooh. and a 26 second, and said it was it was in line with with kind of what the Rams and the the Detroit done for Golf and uh, Stafford, and uh, and then it had a second pre-draft trade of trading CD to the Steelers for pick their 20th pick in the first round and the 84th pick in the third round, and uh, um, and so then it. it 
it listed the draft got started. So, so then we have three picks in the first round, and so, so then it was going. Then it was going to have them take trade with with the Chargers. Which, and this is where I, I it kind of lost me. It, they was going to trade, make a trade with the Chargers. They was going to trade the thirteenth pick and their own twenty uh, fourth pick and a fourth round pick to move up to the fifth pick, and and they'd also get a fourth and a twenty twenty five third, I think, but. And they was going to take Jaden Daniels, and uh, with that, with the fifth pick. So, uh, but and then, but when it when it all was said and done, you know, they would end, it, it even went all the way to to pick every player <laughs> for them in that draft, and uh, yeah. and it's it's, it's 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 a cool thing to read, but but you know, it's pretty pretty much kind of a dream, I guess. But yeah. but I you know. If you made the first two trades, I don't know if I would have made the third. I would just went. I would have would roll with O'Connell and and um, um, Trey Lance this year because yeah. you got them and you could really you could rebuild. You could add a defensive end, a defensive lineman, an offensive lineman, and maybe a wide receiver. Yeah. Now the 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 drawbacks to all that though is if you had three number one picks in this round, this draft. The only the drawback, all three of them guys are going to be their their second contracts are all going to come due at the same time. So, you, so you you know you know so you then you kind of be in a, another cap situation like you are now. So, yeah. but that I, I feel like that's what he was talking about. But I I've, there's 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 so much stuff on the internet right now. I guess because it's just there's nothing to talk about. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, the, the, there's an emoji on, on your phone with the, with the head exploding. I mean, that's, yeah. that's where I was about the middle of that second trade, you know. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I don't think I would made that one either. I, you know, I, I, uh, I, yeah, um, I don't know about so, but, some of those trades. I mean, um, I mean, basically now, you know, instead of a left tackle, a center, and a running back, now you need a wide receiver and a quarterback. I mean, right. I mean, why, why and, just... and and the players that had they had us taken the offensive tackle from uh, from Penn State. With the with uh, one of the first round picks we had left, you know, Jaden Daniels was the first, and it had us taking a center from West West Virginia in the second round, and Keon Coleman, a wide receiver from Florida State, in the second round, and then it had us taking a wide uh, running back from right. Tennessee in the third. All right. You know. All right, Jeff, you're killing me. Like, I, yeah, like, I know. I'm man. just it, like, it, it was amazing. Yeah, because so. none of it's going to anyway, happen. You know, none of it's going to happen. That's I, all this blah blah blah. You know, it's like. It, it, it's not going to happen. They're going to move from 24 no, no, to 29. I, I, don't, I don't think so either. They're going to move from uh, 24 to 29 or 30, pick up a late second or third or something like that, and, and they're, you know, th- that's probably what they're going to do. Just maybe get one in the fourth round because they, they're going to be bored in the fourth round. So uh, right, right, that's probably right. what's going what's gonna to happen. Uh, but I don't yeah. see them moving up, moving around. I don't really see that no. happening. I think I think they. No, I don't either. I, but got, I, I feel like that's probably what he was talking about when he he said he seen that. And uh, I mean, it's it's, it's an interesting read, but that's about all it is, you know. Yeah, yeah. All right, thanks, Jeff. You said interesting read. Here's an interesting read right here. All right, the Star Magazine draft special, um, draft magazine, draft guide, whatever you want to call it. Here, uh, it's available on online go to our website uh there's a there's a story right there on the front of that you can click on you can you figure out ways but you can also you can read just about most of it uh online as well but if you want to have the copy in your hand there's a way uh to go on there to to order that on the website let's go one more call now for sure dan in virginia one last call dan what's up bud hi nick uh, thanks for having me on how you doing uh, my- hey i'm good so yes i'm in northern virginia just outside so this is my first time calling in <laughs> There we go. What's hey, up? Hey. What's up, buddy? Thank you. Yeah, so uh, I've got a, a, a random cowboy for you. Um, so this is back in the 2006 season, and this guy did not actually make the team. He was on the practice squad or something. He, but he's um, the team was really short on pass rushers, and in the fourth preseason game, he blew up and had a bunch of. Uh, uh, sacks and hits on the quarterback but he ended up not making the team um do you remember the guy yeah yeah um crap June? terry uh so it's not Terrius george right no no nope. i know I, okay hold on what's his initials okay uh j g oh man 
first name Jun- Junior. Junior Glimpf. Junior Glimpf. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. Yes. Junior Glimpf because um, – yeah, and I remember we talk about that sometimes. Like you, know, you just go out and just kind of have a junior glimp type game. I can't believe I forgot that guy's name. Uh, but yeah, I remember exactly the game. He just, he, I think he still got cut though, or did he make the team? No, he didn't. He did yeah. not make the team. Yeah, they, and they were desperate for pass rushers that year, and I was just shocked that yeah. he didn't. He got cut, and then I was shocked no one picked him up. Junior and I was Glimpf. shocked. He never did anything. <laughs> That's a, I mean, how can you forget that name? Junior Glimpf. I mean, yeah. yeah. Awesome. I wonder if he made, made the team ever. What do you got? You got another? You got any other yeah. comment? Yeah. Okay. So this is funny. I don't know if you recognize this. This is a pattern or not a pattern, right? Here we go. So the last draft, the first pick was Mozzie Smith. He's defense. The uh, draft before that was Tyler Smith, offense. Draft before that, Micah Parsons, defense. Draft before that, C.D. Lamb, offense. Draft before that, well, they didn't have a first-round pick, but they had Tristan Hill as their first pick, and he was defense. Am I oversimplifying this, that they're taking turns? No, no I mean, I don't, I don't think it's really a coincidence. I mean, I, I, I don't think that's what they're trying to do, but I think it's, it's kind of what – the seesaw does i mean you kind of go up here and then you need help here you need help here and need i mean like that's kind of the way it works out i don't i don't think it's the that's the way it is you know with a lot of years i'm sure there's times where the, you know i know there's been times where they've gone back to back you know and you know like oh five they drafted two first two defensive guys in the first round oh six they drafted bobby carpenter a linebacker in the first round i don't remember 07 right off the bat. Anthony Spencer was the first pick. So defense, defense, defense. So, I mean, it happens. But but in this case, it makes sense. They're going to go back and forth. Well, do, do they uh, – I'm just – if I have a deliverable, like I've got a, I've got to deliver, I've got to do a good job, I'm going to lobby for resources. So these coaches, are they in there – just you know, kind of saying, "Hey, if you're going to hold me accountable, I need I need my picks." And yeah. you know, so my my but my concern with that is like, what happens to best available? Right, you've got some you know great player on the board. How can you just say, "Well, we're taking turns, so we got to we got to pass on this guy"? I don't think they're taking turns. I mean, that's what I'm trying to tell you. They're not taking turns. Uh, I think it's the way that it's worked out. I mean, in 2020, they were going to take defense. And they, but C.D. Lamb was the best player available, so they they took offense. I mean, they they weren't going to do that. And then you know, 2021. I mean, you know, they were going to take a corner, and then Micah Parsons was the the best available. So I don't. I I just think it's the way it's worked out. But it, it's kind of a coincidence. But it's also based off of what you need, and you keep taking one position every year, then you're going to need the defensive help. So. It's just kind of the way it's worked here in the last four or five years. But I don't know if it's been a major trend for many years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I hope you – I certainly hope you're right that, that, that they're not just uh, taking turns or just trying to appease the coaches. Well, did you, uh, look, did you look it up? I mean, did you go further well, than four years? I mean, I don't know. So, okay. Yeah, you're right. If you go back, it wasn't necessarily that way. But, okay, so let's take just within the rounds the last two years. So last year it was – Mozzie Smith defense, Luke Shoemaker offense, uh, Devarian Overshone defense. Now from there, it, it went defense uh, with Fahoko, then uh, Seam Richards offense. Um, now, if you go to the draft before, again, it was Tyler Smith offense, Sam William defense, Jalen Tolbert offense. So at least for the first first three picks, so the the the, the last um, two drafts. The top six picks was back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, I, I, I don't really think, you know, that that's, that's the case. I mean, you stopped on 2019, and uh, you could have gone because that was defense, and then 18 and 17 on the first round were also defense. So, uh, you know, I, I, I just think it's kind of a, a coincidence here in the last few years. But, no, there, there's no way that they're, they're, they're doing that. I mean, they're not, they're not going back and forth. Uh, you, you're just trying to balance out your football team, and that's kind of the way the way it is. But sometimes you need more than than one. I mean, you know, I've I've seen drafts where they've taken, you know, mostly just defense, you know, except for maybe one guy or so. So it's just kind of the yeah. way it works. 
All right. Okay. All right, Dan. All right. Appreciate the call. Uh, good stuff from you guys. Had a lot of fun on today's show. Went a little bit long, so we're going to end it now. Uh, but we will see you Tuesday. Uh, next week, we'll do this thing all over again. All right, so for Chris Beam, I'm Nick Eatman. We'll see you next week on Cowboys Storyline. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about-